the relevance here. I told you to wait on the internet. Now bring it back in. Where does the internet fall? Is it a medium or is it a place? And that's exactly the issue. It seems like the internet is somehow this strange thing in which it's both a medium and a place, which means that the typical ways we regulate it, we don't really know how to apply them. So with the internet, can you just say, oh, it's like a place, there are websites, you can just stop people from getting to those websites. You just say, children aren't allowed to go to this page. On the one hand, you could say that, but what's the issue here? What's the issue with just saying, like, you have to be over 18 to enter this website? You yeah, you just claim you're over 18. And then all of a sudden, all of that. So, so there's a sense in which, on the one hand, if you put up a paywall or passwords or anything like that, you can cordon off parts of the internet. The issue is that, at the same time, most things don't have password protection, and most things you're not paying for, and most things all you have to do by the nature of the internet is just say, yeah, I'm allowed to be here. And if you say you're allowed to be here, then you're allowed to be there. And so here's this issue of like, you say, well, the internet's like a place, all we gotta do is just say, you keep the, keep the pornography on pay, all pay for pornography websites, children have to prove that they're over 18, therefore we don't have to worry about saying no porn on the internet. But of course, there's no such thing as like a perfect door on the internet. If you say you have to be over 18, then you know a, ch a child can just click the yeah, I'm over 18 button. And so then it seems like, oh, the internet is much more of a medium. And the other thing with it is how does the internet, where does the internet live? Like in one sense it's in cyberspace, but cyberspace doesn't just like, it's not like around us all of the time, it's connected to what? Like where does it come from? Yeah, it's literally pieces of machinery connected together by cable. So in, in that sense, it literally is like a telephone system. The only major difference is that it's end to end and there's no like operating house. So the way like a telephone system worked was you would have one person here, they'd call a call center and the call center would direct them to somebody else. Now you just have end to end connections. So there's nobody in the middle connecting the calls, but it's still just a web of interconnected wires. That's what the internet is on. Like, if we lost power worldwide, the internet would stop because we require cables. Also, if the cables get damaged, the internet cuts out. There was this great uh, story a few years back where certain countries, because just the nature of them, have more or less cables running in and out of them. And so there was this great story a few years ago of this little old lady in Armenia was just digging in her garden and hit a cable that knocked out the internet for like half of Armenia because all she was doing was digging her garden, hit a cable, no more internet. And so at some, in some sense, the internet is literally just cables like telephone or anything else. But on the other side, it's also kind of like a place because we have websites. We have places where you can keep people out of. So it's this really strange middle ground and no one's really sure how to uh, regulate it because of that. People who are like, oh, it's a place, so we can just say people can't go there. We don't need anything controlling what's on there. Well, other people are like, no, we need to treat this like radio. We need to treat this like something that we do control. Yeah, I agree, but I think the one thing I probably could say is that like there are places that are clearly more regulated than others. Like, <coughs> like if you like, like there's <coughs> websites that you can't go on without having a bank card or like. Yeah, absolutely. There like, and like, there are degrees of regulation of what you can get onto. Yeah, like other websites like Twitter or like Facebook, social media, or like you know, certain websites where they want you to join or like even like when you go on a website to watch uh, movies or like, you know, watch TV shows, they ask you how old you are so, or to use the service and like you could just log, but um, if you want to like use Netflix, you got to actually put in a real bank card. So yeah. it's like... That's it's a great really point. And that, it seems like one of the things and one of the reasons it is like a place is Netflix is able to say you cannot come in here unless somebody you know has a password. Um, and so that's a major difference. And it seems like because of that, Netflix is allowed to put R-rated movies on it without editing them. So like, if you had like a very gory movie and you wanted to show it at like 7 p.m. on a Friday before Netflix or something, and you wanted to just like, if you were like TNT and you wanted to show a movie, you couldn't show like Gladiator in its entirety on like a Tuesday night because it's too bloody. 
Now, though, because of this paywall, you can say, look, you are taking responsibility as somebody and you paid for it, therefore you are being kept out. But the issue here that I think is something like um, Facebook or uh, Twitter is very much on this middle ground because on the one hand, they are they sell themselves as places, like a platform. Like we are a place, like Facebook calls itself like the, the the like international um, like town square where it's a place where everyone can come and talk to each other, and so that's the way they they market it. Like the we are just here, we exchange ideas. We don't need to censor. It's a place. The way that you censor it is you just keep certain people out of certain areas. But the issue with that is because it's also kind of a medium, it can be exploited, and you can have things like fake news being exchanged. Like, in a physical place, if you had somebody out on the street just shouting nonsense, people could move that person physically aside or, like, say, you cannot do that. On Facebook, because it's a medium, if you say whatever you want, somebody's going to be able to hear it. And so that's the issue. Is if, you want, if you're following the big um, to-do right now around Facebook and, like, regulation around Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook are basically arguing, we are a place. We should be regulated like a place. Anyone should be allowed to say anything they want and you just keep it behind doors and paywalls. Um, the, the US government, people like uh, Elizabeth Warren are saying, no, 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 Facebook is much more of a medium. This is the way many people get their news and we need to start treating it like that. And we need to start regulating Facebook like it's the, the internet, or like the phone lines, like the radio, like television. Because the fact is that we can't start keep using this model or else it's going to be exploited and we will have lots of fake information and people getting manipulated by fake bots on the internet. And so that's really what this debate is and this is why it's so hard to regulate because everyone sees both sides of it. So is everyone on board with, with this sort of thing? All right, so that's the first issue is it's just hard to even say what the internet is. The other issue is there are like four main ways things get regulated. And the issue is none of them seem to apply neatly to the internet and to, to cyber technology. So what are the four ways that things get regulated? Let's just go through one at a time and we'll say what it is, how it's supposed to work, and why it doesn't work too well for the internet. So what is one way in which things get regulated? Laws. Laws, laws is the simplest one to, to understand and look at. So laws. What is it to regulate something by law? What if I... Yeah, a bunch of people living in like a sovereign nation or sometimes internationally or sometimes locally come up with a bunch of rules that say, you cannot break these rules. And what happens if you break the rules? You get punished. Yeah, that's the whole idea behind law. You say, here are the rules you have to follow. Here are what will happen if you break them. And then if you do break them, somebody comes along and punishes you. So that's the whole idea behind law. So what are the strengths of law as a means of, of regulating? What are the positives behind it? It's not relentless. Yeah, so there's a certain sense in which as far as these things go, it's pretty straightforward, clear, as like if you broke the law, you have committed a crime and the, the law enforcement will come after you. That's like the whole idea behind it. Now, of course, law, one problem is that it doesn't, well, we'll come to the problems in a second, but that's the idea. And also, if you want to know what the laws are generally, what can you do? Yeah, you can look them up. They're written down somewhere. It's relatively easy to find out what they are. Yeah, but I was going to say the aspect of law that probably makes it easy to regulate, not necessarily what the laws talk about themselves, but the deterrent aspect. And this is exactly the thing with laws, is the real power of a law only comes from how strongly it's enforced or how much people believe it will be enforced. So for instance, we have a law which says jaywalking is illegal. What is jaywalking? Crossing somewhere other than the, the crosswalk? Is this real, like, if anyone was just coming to New York and watching people, would anyone think that's a law? No, most people don't even know that is a law in New York because it's literally never enforced. But like, there's a place in like, in certain, south, certain states where I've never seen it, like a guy got harassed, but yeah. he walked. Yeah, you, there he are other he places harassed, though. But he wasn't, technically. Yeah, there are other places where literally you can get like a ticket for jaywalking. And uh, New York is probably the least strict about jaywalking anywhere in the country. 
But there are places where literally, if you do not cross at a crosswalk, you will get a ticket. That's because every other block is a crosswalk in there. Yeah, um, well that's one thing, and also the fact that just like, New Yorkers understand there are too many people to waste time walking to the sidewalk. Like, there's just too many people, it takes too long, we're crossing wherever the hell we want. Um, but other places, it's not like that. Then there are other sorts of laws in, with the same thing, like other laws where you're like, that's technically a law, but nobody enforces it. Like, um, and then when somebody does enforce it, everyone else in the society is like, oh my god, are you serious? So one is, uh, how many of you bike in this city? Anybody? Is anyone brave enough? Um, how many times have you ever stopped at a red light and waited for it to change? Kind of like one. Yeah, you, you've done it maybe twice in your life, but, and why are you okay doing that? Because I bet none of you have ever been pulled over for it. However, it's technically illegal, and last week I saw a cop pull somebody over who bikes through a red light. And what's the response that everyone has? It's like, Oh, come on, cops. Don't you have better things to do than arrest this person who just bikes through the red light on their way to work? And this is another one where it's like, the law's in place, but until some asshole cop comes along, and I'm not, to be clear, I'm not saying all cops are assholes, I'm saying this particular cop is an asshole for pulling over people on bikes. I would like to run a new story just with the bike. It's like, a couple of months ago, I was driving car through the RFK bridge, yeah. and there was one Chinese guy riding the city bike, and he was going through the hole, you know, the mm -hmm. crossing the bridge, and there were four bunch of <laughs> NYPD troopers <laughs> behind, and after him is calling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so it does happen, like people will get arrested for this, but generally, there are certain laws, until the law is enforced, it really has no power. And this was like, things like um, discrimination laws, until somebody comes along and says, you cannot discriminate, the, and, and we can prove you did discriminate, it's very hard to prove that somebody's broken the law. So that's the idea behind what. So if we're talk, talking about laws, and they're only as strong as the enforcement, what's the issue with the internet? We're imagining, how do you regulate the, the internet? How do you regulate cyber technology? Oh, you just point to the law. We just make laws for it. So what are some of the issues here? tied in with the thing we just talked about. What's the issue with enforcement and the internet? Who's gonna be in charge of this? Yeah, so one thing is where are laws applied? In court. So in court, and specifically though, who has the authority? I cannot walk up to you and be like, you just jaywalked, I'm arresting you, and pull out like some handcuffs, <laughs> like handcuff you and drag you away and be like, I'm punishing you, why not? Not I'm not an officer of the law. I'm not authorized to do that. So who is authorized to do that? Who's allowed to come up to me if I if I'm the person who bikes through a red light and somebody wants to like punish me for it? Who's allowed to do that? A cop. A cop. Specifically, a cop from where? It's not any cop. Yeah. So it's it's got to be like a New York City cop of that jurisdiction. A London cop, like somebody from the United Kingdom, or a Chinese cop, cannot just on their vacation decide to arrest me. They are not allowed to do that. You have to have jurisdiction over that area. And the laws, as we said before, only apply in a specific place. So like, if a New York, if I were say 18 and drinking a beer on the sidewalk, a New York City cop could arrest me. But even if I'm drinking beer on the sidewalk at 18, um, in like Montreal or in Germany, the cop isn't going to arrest me because my laws, even though I'm an American citizen, they don't apply to me here. Uh, if I'm drinking in Berlin, no one's going to arrest me, even an American cop. See, the American cop's like, that person's definitely not 21. They can't arrest me. That's the nature of the law. Now, what's the problem, though, when we turn to the Internet? There is no, like, specific no, there is certain yeah. law. So, place. when you access a website, where... What are you interacting with? Where are you contacting? It's just some server. No. Some server. Where is this server? Somewhere. It's somewhere. That's literally all you know about it. Like literally for many web websites are hosted on servers. That's where like the literal mechanical mechanisms and storage are that allow that website to run. But that's, that server can be just about anywhere in the world. So if you access a website that's hosted in, uh, say, Singapore, you are now, ac you are from the United States interacting instantly with something halfway around the world. 
what is the issue here? Say you do something illegal. What? Or you do something. Uh, is it illegal or not illegal? Let's say what you do is you, um, from New York City, you decide to bet on a soccer game that's taking place in England right now. And you bet through a company that's based in Singapore. Have you done something illegal? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. This is exactly the issue, is we don't really know how to do it. On the one hand, like it really, you have to know the laws inside and out to know if you've done something illegal. First off, you have to know, is Singapore somewhere which is allowed to host gambling websites? If they aren't allowed to host them, then yes, you've done something illegal by Singapore law. If, however, New York has a law that you can't even access gambling websites from New York City, then even if it's legal in Singapore, it's allowed. Now there might also, on top of this, you could imagine that if the English uh, Premier League made a rule no betting on our sport, then even if it's legal in, he in the United States to bet from New York City, and Singapore allows legal sports gambling, if the event is taking place in the United Kingdom where imagine it were illegal to bet on any sport it would then be illegal by somebody else's jurisdiction. And this is the issue that you run into, is you, anytime you're accessing the internet, you are connected with so many different places, each one of which has its own laws, and each one of which has its own law enforcement. So whether or not you're breaking the law is gonna depend on where you are, what you're doing, what the laws are where you are, where you're accessing, what the laws are where you're accessing, and what the thing is that you're accessing, where it was produced, and what its laws were. So I wanted to just clarify, in the United States it's much easier because federal government uh, regulates interstate commerce as, as in Africa. In the international sense, there is no body that would enforce the law. Uh, in and here's the other issue with it. Even, like, let's imagine that um, I'm a very, very terrible person who enjoys watching videos of animals being like killed on screen. And I get much enjoyment out of this because I'm a sociopath and I'm like, oh, I love watching animals die. And I access this website called like I love watching animals die.com. And it's not, you're not allowed in the United States to watch these videos. Um, but say that uh, I'm watching it from, uh, I'm, watch I'm accessing it from, say, I don't know, another country which doesn't have these laws, and the server is hosted in a third place. Or even more, say I'm an American citizen and I'm watching this terrible video, and then I know the cops are coming for me, so I just fly to another country and keep watching my terrible website on this from this country where there aren't these laws. What's going to happen to me? Nothing, exactly. Especially, another case is if somebody's hacking a U.S. corporation, and this is what we talked about before, where are they going to be hacking this U.S. corporation from, generally? From yeah, from abroad, and almost certainly with a country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States. So if I am a, if I am a say, uh, Chinese national hacking Google from China, and Google finds me hacking them, Google's going to want something to happen to me, and they might go, hey, U.S. government, there's somebody hacking us from China. Uh, the U.S. government's going to say, sorry, they're in China, and they're a Chinese national, and there's nothing we can do about it. So even if you have clearly broken the law, you aren't going to be punished for it necessarily. And even in cases of interstate commerce, um, so in the United States, there are very strict rules about moving things across state lines, and what if you have... Uh, like, literally, if, if I were, had like a pound of cocaine in my hands right now, and I just stayed in New York City, the punishment would be significantly less than if I took my pound of cocaine across the bridge. The moment I do that, it becomes a federal issue and the crime is much worse. The issue with the internet, though, is a lot of times the only things crossing state boundaries are information. So, there are cases in which if I'm in New York, but I'm, and I'm accessing a gambling website in Las, that's hosted in Las Vegas, then it's unclear whether, if I'm in a state where gambling's illegal, and Nevada is hosting the website, whose law am I breaking, and how can I be punished? It's not international law, because I've technically not crossed state boundaries, and Nevada, not breaking their laws, because they're allowed to host the websites, 
But then you might argue that, oh, no, wait, Nevada is accessing customers who aren't allowed to actually access their website because they're located in the state. Let's just use Alabama because I'm sure Alabama has strict gambling laws. So like if an Alabama, like a resident of Alabama accesses a website in Las Vegas and gambles, they're possibly breaking local Alabama law. And who gets punished? Is it the person who accessed it? Is it the website who hosted it? gave them that information, it's very unclear. So that's one major issue with law. It's just like, we have these laws that are only as strong as the punishment or enforcement, and it's almost impossible to enforce the internet. Um, what are some other issues with law? And this is something we've been talking about a lot. Remember when, when we talked last week, what were we talking about last week? Just a reminder. Copyright. Copyright. Where did we say copyright law came from? When did it come into existence? The main copyright laws we're working with today have been around since like the Constitution. We have laws from 200 years ago. These are the ones we're working with. They don't apply well. And then, so you come along and you say, we want new laws. What's the problem with like coming up with new laws for technology? I was just going to say in general, like, law is sometimes a too broad or too narrow. Yeah, so one issue with law is that any way you write it, there's going to be gaps in the law. Like, anything you name, like, there are multiple ways of interpreting written language, and it can lead to major problems. So you can have, case, like, here's an actual court case which went on in the United Kingdom for a while, which is my favorite court case possibly in, in history. It was, uh, how many people have heard of Jaffa Cakes? Do people know what these are? <laughs> A Jaffa cake is basically these little orange flavored dessert things. They're about the size of the cookie, a cookie, and they come in like cookie packaging, and they have little orange flavoring in the middle, but they're kind of squishy. So it's basically like, they're called Jaffa cakes, but they look like Jaffa cookies. Why was this a court case? Well, in the United Kingdom, cookies and cakes are taxed differently. Cookies are taxed at a higher rate than cakes are. <coughs> And what happened was the, the United Kingdom government came to Jaffa Cake and said, we are going to uh, charge you and tax you as if you made cookies, because that's more money for us. And Jaffa Cake said, but we don't make cookies, we make cakes. You have to tax us at the rate of cakes. And this got to like the Supreme Court level in the United Kingdom, in which they were arguing over whether Jaffa Cakes were a cookie or a cake. And the final, like, Proof was that Jaffa Cake, the company, made a cake-sized Jaffa Cake and brought it into the courtroom to prove that, no, this is really a cake. And this was like a giant court case that went on for years of like, is this a cookie or is this a cake? And that's the way in which law is messy. Like, you literally have people, and Jaffa Cake will, is still making the giant cakes for precisely this reason. There are also ones of like, there was a big one in the United States over whether tomatoes were fruit or vegetables for tax purposes. <laughs> Um, this happened back in the 1800s, and these are the ways in which the law, as good as it is, is still kind of messy. Um, but here's another thing. Imagine you wrote a perfect law. How many of you think back to your schoolhouse rock or intro <laughs> government class or anything else? How do you make a law? Oh, schoolhouse rock. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Do people, how long, if I want to make a law, what do I have to do? First, I think you have to get uh, a whole bunch of people to Sign this law. Yeah, first off, I have to be a member of an elected government body. So say I'm like, I know what we need. We need new versions of copyright law. So first thing first, I need to become a lawyer well enough to know. So now that's like three years plus like an internship before I'm big enough. We're saying at least five years until I know the law well enough to do anything with it. So um, now I've got those five years under my belt. Now what do I want to have happen? If I want to affect the law, what has to happen 